We're here in Amsterdam at the Tobacco Theater and we're here with Arthur Stolk from Iconic. How are you doing, uh, Arthur? Hi, Wessel. Doing fine. You? As always. Um, how do you see the market at this moment? Do you see some bullish signs yet? or? Yeah, we see some bullish signs. Yeah, we do. Um, we hope that we have seen the bottom for this year. Mm. Um, so yeah, uh, we are very positive uh, on this moment. Uh, with only hope, uh, you can buy Bitcoin, isn't it? Or no, you need money to buy Bitcoin, Vessel. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but we we uh. trade the market, so um, yeah. yeah, we hope that we have seen the bottom. Otherwise, we will take in uh, different positions on Bitcoin. Mm. Maybe you can tell for the wider public what does Iconic do? Is it like a, a fund or actively trading fund or? A good question. Um, Iconic uh, currently has uh, two funds. Mm -hmm. We have a long-term growth fund comparable to an index fund. Uh, we have a basket of multiple coins. Uh, and we have an actively traded fund um, where traders are trading 24-7 a day uh, on the market. Mm. Uh, and if you look at the portfolio, maybe you can say something about that. that uh, w what kind of coins are you bullish on actually? Or does it differ per month or even per week? Yeah, it differs per day. Per day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. O also in the uh, longer term uh, fund? Um, yeah, but because we are actively traded, uh, the active traded fund, mm -hmm. we just look at how the markets react on that day mm -hmm. and we will anticipate on that. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so if you look at, at the market at this moment, you see some bullish signs. Um, yeah, the, the, the question is, will it be picked up? Eh? Will it be picked up by, by, for instance, institutional investors? Do you, signs, do you see signs of that? Um, well, the main problem right now is that there need to be a regulatory framework for institutional investors to invest in cryptocurrencies. Mm. And there isn't a framework yet, so they're waiting for it. But of course, there are like uh, funds, and investors can actually investors can invest in these funds yeah. if they want family offices, etc., mm -hmm. or uh, even bigger investors. It is all already possible, but it's unregulated. Yeah, and that's the main problem that it is unregulated. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the big pension funds from the Netherlands they can't invest in cryptocurrencies right now because of the lack of a regulatory framework. Mm. Are you in talks with these these bigger guys, or you don't focus on it? And with the bigger guys, you mean the pension funds, the bigger family offices? Uh, they they could have also are interesting clients for for Iconic. Oh yeah, oh yeah, of course. But we don't talk about acquisition uh, procedures right now. Uh, you also invest in ICOs. Maybe, um, of course, the ICO market is quite dependent on the whole sentiment. Yep. Uh, how do you see the sentiment at the moment? I mean, oh yeah, uh, the currently investment sentiment. Um, the investors only will take projects that are guaranteed on a good return on their investment. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's the main problem right now. Good projects aren't getting funded. Although they have a good team, reliable business, uh, everything is in place. So yeah, that's a shame. Mm. What are the decisive factors for an investor to, to invest in an ICO? I mean, it's not only team technology, it's also the metrics of the, of the ICO itself, eh? the tokenization model. Yeah, there, there are multiple factors uh, that we look into before we will uh, invest. But all deals that we are doing are tailor-made. But did you do the last months? Did you do some some ICO deals? Yeah, ICO deals is a big word, but investing in ICOs, yeah, we did, we did, uh, we did Solve Dot Care. Oh yeah, yeah um, we do. We have uh, did uh, Safeguard from the Netherlands also, and we are currently um, in talks with a new ICO. Uh, it's a really good one, really big one. And when we have invested in them, and we will announce it. Okay, is the Dutch ICO? Or? Um, I think so. I think that the the, the company is uh, from the Netherlands, but the team is international. Mm -hmm. What kind of sector? Uh, I mean, it's the medical sector as well, or gaming industry, or retail industry. Retail. Yeah. So I think of retail coin. Retail coin. Ah, or another one. Perhaps yeah. momentum. 
<laughs> no, 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 it's a new coin. A new coin? Yeah, with a different proposition. All right. Maybe you can tell something about the proposition? Of that coin? Yeah. No, not yet. All right. Because we're in talk it's with them. New. It's new, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. We see here also eh, in, in tobacco tea too, uh, lots of ICOs, uh, Orpheum, Trusted Cars, Cripply. We saw uh, Nostrum here as well. And, and, and I mean, what is your first impression? Um, a lot of nice ICOs mm. here. Um, yeah, and first impression, good food, nice people. And I think there will be investment opportunities. Mm. Okay guys, so uh, it's still early this day, so come to the Tobacco Theater here in the Amsterdam uh, Center, the NES, uh, and uh, yeah, thank you very much uh, Arthur for your uh, recap of today. Uh, thank you Wessel for the interview, and good luck in uh, Zouk this week. Yes, I'm going to the TechCrunch blog sessions uh, in Zouk, and uh, hopefully I'm going to meet lots of interesting people especially uh, the CEO of Binance, we can talk about the Binance hack maybe. It was quite interesting, eh, the Binance hack last night. Well, uh, it was an API hack, as they mentioned it. They uh, uh, reacted quite good, Binance, so I don't think it will be a hassle. Right. Wessel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Right, mate.